So this is part two of the Orcs Beam video. Part one, I looked at the light bar they sent me. This one is all about the control panel and me rigging up ridiculous things that they probably never imagined I would do. Orcs Beam gave this to me, but this device is brilliant. And whilst it's really intended just to control different lighting options for vehicles, I think for someone who has a camper van, there's a lot more versatility you can do to by having a control panel you can access whilst driving. So at the minute, I've just got the light bar programmed in. So the light bar on the big roof turns on with that button. This episode, I'm just gonna play around with a few different ideas on other things I'm gonna set up and install to work on this control panel. I'm gonna set button two to, be, to bind the light bar to the high beams of the vehicle. The main light bar on the roof attached to two different buttons doing different things. I'm also gonna look at attaching the max fan to here as well, so I can turn the max fan on and off from the cab. I'm also gonna install an engine preheater at some point in the future, so we'll see if we can get that wired in and how we would do it. And then the other buttons I might leave spare for other times when I want uh, more lights potentially on the sides or the rear. So let's get on with the video. Actually, before we jump into the video, the sort of first half is going to be a bit of an unboxing showing all the bits of the kit you get in the box. It's got all the wiring with it, and then it's going to be a bit of the installation process. Then the second half of the video is how I'm going to be rigging up all the different things. So, the fuse, the control panel, which actually feels really good, appears to be metal. The switch panel's fuse assembly, which actually is a pretty impressive bit of kit. An extension, extension leads for the switch panel and its fuse box. Instructions, some terminal cables. You actually think feel all right, maybe a bit wobbly. I would probably make my own cables anyway. All the stickers for the control panel, a bit more stuff. Another wire, plate, thing for mounting the fuse box. Mounting bracket for the control panel. Another piece of metal. Bolt, piggyback fuse, bit of metal. So the H-way switch panel. We've got the actual switches itself. Nice hard switches. This is the RGB version. So apparently opposed to just being one color, which I think used to be blue or green model, it's RGB. You can set it to whatever color you want. But it's quite nice. If you have it in your dashboard, vans have different um, LEDs on the dashboards for different colors. So I can change it to the blue, like the other transit lights. Mounting bracket. So what I'm particularly impressed with is this, is the light unit, or the control unit. So there is a circuit under here. Opposed to using relays, it's using something else. MOF sets, maybe? And you can put your lights in there. It's all individually fused. Your two big positive and negative cables come in there. And I believe there's also the sort of data cable from here, which connects to the fuse box. And this cable goes in there to what it does, I have no idea. That is pretty sweet. My guess is this is covered in here because it can be mounted in the engine bay as a bit of protection from grime and dirt. Came with a breaker. Uh, I can imagine that these are, I think you can put through apparently a maximum of 60 amp through that. So a 60 amp breaker. Some connection wires. Uh, I think this is a well, this is a bracket for mounting this, depending where you want to mount it in the engine bay. A bunch of stickers, as well as your own DIY stickers. Some screwy bits and bobs. Uh, the indifferent mount for the control panel. I think if you want to do a flush mount, you can mount it flush to somewhere like that. Or if you want to have an angled mount, you can presumably mount it angled on something a bit like that. An instruction manual with things. Okay, looks good. We'll play with it properly. So now I'm going to install the system. I'm going to install it and it's going to be powered by the leisure system in my van. You could put it on the starter battery if you want, but I want all my auxiliary stuff to be running off the, um, the leisure system. Um, so we're going to get the light bar installed as well. And we're going to run different ways to turn that on and off. If you want to check how I did that or how I installed and run multiple lights from the ceiling of the van, check out the other video. And then after we've got those, that working, we're going to then look at doing things like the max fan and other different things you can get this control panel to do. Panel. We're going to mount it up here so the cables can come in and go in the wire glands underneath there. And then we're going to drill some holes in here and then run it to my electrical cupboard. So it means when I'm wiring up the circuits, wires can run in here, be nicely managed, and then get cut to the right length and put in. 
So the plan was I was going to use the cable supplied, but I'm never really a fan of supplied cables because I never find the crimps are particularly good. And there's an example. So uh, I'm going to remake this cable. To be fair, Oxbeam Pro don't make these cables in house themselves. <laughs> Right, messy, wired up, or getting eaten up, whatever. So, let's get these wired in. So next is the unit's power, which is this pin and then the data for the controller. Uh, I'm just gonna run it to a fuse and a switch because I've got all this running off my leisure system. Before I start putting too many other bits in the way, I'm just going to thread the uh, data cable in as well. The actual power for all the circuits is from these two cables. Right, let's turn it on at the fuse. And then let's turn it on at the wall. It's done the thing. Oh, it definitely works. So I just press press button one I can see the light bar comes on uh, right I'm gonna open up the app and we'll go from there right switch from my phone to so in the aux beam app Bluetooth controller connecting connection successful okay I don't know if it's connected to this or what uh, it says it's green oh okay That exposure's a bit high, so I just... Right, it's a bit hard to see on that, these are all blown out. But, you can have whatever colour you like. Um, quite useful if it's in your vehicle, because lots of different vans have default um, different colour themes. For me, they are a blue. So we'll set them to a blue so they can match my dash. Brilliant, so that's that set up. Icons, the number one default icon. And uh, well, it's a light bar, isn't it? So let's scroll through the list. Light bar, there we go. Select. So now number one is set as a light, as a light bar. Mode. So this is one of the cool programming things. At the minute, it's got it on uh, toggle. So pressing the button holds it on and turns it off. Momentary means it only stays on whilst I'm holding the button. And pulsed does pulsed. Additionally, what I can do is I can group. So I could change one button on here to control effectively three buttons if I wanted. Or one button could turn on eight different appliances, which is quite a nice feature. So far, pretty happy. So this is going to get mounted in my dash and I'm going to put the correct sort of stickers. Um, this is the extension piece I got. So it's about a metre from long, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it directly in half uh, and then I can sort of use this as my extension cable to connect one at the cab end, one in the cupboard end, and then those wires I've just run can be in the middle. I just filmed that whole sequence, I didn't realise when I came past the camera I knocked it out of you, so there we go, it's now mounted, I'm going to plug it in. It should light up. See if I can get in this time without knocking the camera. Yep. Well, if everything's working, I should be able to press this button, which is currently set to high beam, it should turn it on. Well, it works. Well, that's nifty, isn't it? So I thought it'd be interesting just to have a look at the properties of the unit when it's on. And on. So at the minute, that's the main breaker, and you can see the main power supply cable is a little bit warmer. That glowing cable is the circuit or the wire going to the light bar, which is currently on. Now, just because it's uh, really bright compared to the rest of the scene doesn't mean it's too hot. It just it's the uh, FLIR camera is just showing contrast between the coldest and warmest points. It's only about 20 degrees. And we've got the actual box at the moment. So we take the cover off it. And there we can see, uh, I've only got one circuit at the moment, so we can see the runners, the wires running to that circuit. And then the really 
warm looking spot is just the 30 amp fuse it's only pulling about 15 amps so that's just a, an example of the fuse is nowhere near what it's maximum it can take it just looks warmer and then i think behind it is probably the some of the wiring run on the pcb so you might think what's the point in doing the thermal images yeah they look cool but what's the actual kind of purpose i mainly wanted to show sort of the heat so the unit itself and running light bars are kind of big big ampage pulls which means that can, things can get warm so i wanted to see that the wire supplied uh, for the wiring harness and um for the control panel were actually appropriate sized uh, wiring for the job you're going to do be interesting to see if i'm pulling the full uh, the maximum at 12 volt which is 600 watt from this unit how hot things get but so far pretty happy those temperatures are nothing interesting to be honest uh, now it's time to get on to a little bit more the more nerdy stuff and actually installing little bits and bobs and if you like this sort of stuff like electrics and some of just interesting projects uh check out subscribe to my channel check out a bunch of the other stuff on the uh, the van build because i do a lot of things with uh, electrics with in the van so looking into other uses for the aux beam control panel um as in just outside of using lights how about turning the max fan on and off um, from the cab so many people don't know that the max fan actually has two ports here um I think an RJ11 and an RJ45. I'm using an RJ45 cable down to here. And this mess of wires, but all you really need to know is if you tap different wires together, things happen. Such as if I touch the brown and white and orange, the max fan turns on and off. So brown and, uh, brown and white, orange. It's really hard to do this whilst filming. So let's wire that up to a circuit um, and set it on momentarily. So max fan cable is all run and it's just down to two wires now. So if I tap these together, You can hear the max fan has just turned on. And tapping together again. The max fan turns off. So I can't just plug this in here like that. That isn't gonna work because I need these two to make a momentary connection. And this is just gonna be a circuit which is on off positive and negative. So that isn't gonna work. So I'm gonna use a relay and I'm gonna use a relay to bridge these, um, which is probably not the intended use of a relay. I'm gonna use that to make a momentary collection as you saw on my little test. And then when the circuit's completed uh, on this one, it's gonna close it. And I'm gonna set that this to work on a momentary uh, so it's going to close it rapidly, open it again, and doing that will then be the momentary pulse that this needs to turn the unit on and off. Well, first up, welcome to the messy bench. So we're going to be using these relays. These are 40 amp relays, completely unnecessary for what I need because I need only like a tiny ampage going through them, but that's what I've got, and I've already got I've got these nice caddies for them as well. You can just put terminals in the end of these, but I'm going to use little cradles because I've got them. Let's get this all mounted up in the cupboard. Right, I've got the app currently open on the phone. So I'm going to change, I believe that one I've just wired in is this button. It's the bottom rightmost one. So I'm gonna set this button to be a momentary switch. And then hopefully if I tap that, well, yep. Yeah. I can even do it in pulse, so we can just hear it go off and on. So on the momentary, you can hear, when I hold it down, it clicks open. When I close it, it clicks shut which is what I want. So now I'm gonna test it by just wiring these up and then I'll do the final wiring. 
Right, all being well, now that these are connected together, when I turn the circuit back on on the pulse, close the relay, which will bridge those two momentarily. Uh, give it a test. Seems to be working. Fantastic. So let's just try it from the front now as well. Right, well, it appears to be working. And... Happy with that. Right, the system's all working. I now just need to uh, neaten this all up. So let's get disassembling it and heat shrinking all the wires. Right, one system all set up and done. So that's the max fan put in. Uh, let's figure out the wiring for having button one to be the manual on off for the light beam and button two to be the on off with when the high beam's on for the light bar. Just a point uh, that I am rigging this up to the high beam, but I can turn that on and off uh, because I can't use the this light bar on the public road. So it'd be just for off-road or private land use. Um, however, check your own laws on what it is with using light bars on roads. Right, so next job is to wire in the light bar to work with a manual on and off button, which is going to be button one on the controller and to bind it to the high beam the problem being having two um circuits running the light bar at once so this is how i'm going to do it so we've got the high beam this is a five prong relay which is one of these which is what i'm going to use normally you would have let's say the example of your supply feed coming in and then you would have two different circuits it went to the supply goes in when the relay is not powered uh, it just it would go down this circuit and when the relay is powered that arm moves the other side and it will go down there but that's not what i want i'm effectively doing it the opposite way around i'm having two supplies and one led bar and so i'm going to use it in reverse the, the idea being that i'm going to have circuit one is going to be the manual so when the relay is turned off if i hit the circuit one button that would power on the led light bar and I want circuit two to be when the high beams are on. We'll quickly draw in, this is the high beam. So let's just simplify that, that's the high beam. So I'm gonna use a signal uh, as a voltage from when the high beam is turned on, I'm gonna have a little wire which just feeds into the relay. And with that then connected to the vehicle ground, that would complete the circuit. So when the high beam turned on, uh, it would also power the relay, which would then change the arm from this mode over to here, which then means the high beam will come on with the light. So what would additionally happen is I would have to have the binding light beam button turned on. So for example, if I turn circuit two, and this is off, and circuit two on, but the light beam's not on. But as soon as the high beam is turned on, the relay closes, and then that circuit is complete, which powers the high beam. And then if the high beam is turned off, so the relay is over here, if I turn this on, then the circuit is completed without having to power up the relay or energize the relay, which means the LED light bar comes in. So normally I would have this on for manual control and this on for not, for high beam control. And then I need to figure out how to run a wire and tap into the high beam feed and run that to the back of the van. My van's eye has fallen out. Uh, I mean, I took the light off so I could get access to the main light plug because I need to figure out which one of these pins uh, is the high beam. And after basically decoding with the voltmeter on each terminal uh, with the lights on, lights off, and then the high beams on and off, I've concluded that it's pin one, which is this one here, which is the power for the high beam. So I'm going to tap into that um, for the feed. Blue is low, that's no surprise for a transit. 
So, button one, light bar on, light bar off. At the minute, if I hit the stick, high beam on, high beam off, that light's currently turned off. You can hear the relay in the back. Now, if I turn that one on and I hit the high beam, we get both. Sorted. So we've now got manual off and on, high beam normal, and then high beam bound to the main light bar. On to the next project. So here's a quick and easy use for the AUX beam control well, uh, engine preheater. So this is uh, an engine preheater I'm currently installing in the van, and it requires a positive single signal to this little box, which is acting as the, the communication protocol to speak to the heater to turn on. So the minute I've just got it jerry-rigged to there, so when I hit the switch, that's gonna, that's gonna turn that circuit on, which will give a 12 volt signal to the signal feed, which will then turn the heater on. Well, that's the plan at least. So let's go have a look. Should be this button. There we go. I'll just wait till the pump here and then I'll shut it down. Coolant pump is cycling. Glow plug is heating. Uh, so this isn't being powered by this. This unit isn't being powered by the circuit. The unit is being powered by at the minute a power supply over there. It's just it's this is just being used as a signal. Oh, you can hear the pump going. There's no fuel, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna light. So there's another use. I can have it turned on as an engine preheater. I can have, I can use the Yorks beam as a engine preheater ignition. Cool, let's go turn that off. So, turning it off, it's then just realized the signal has stopped. So then the heater goes into its shutdown mode. Um, the diesel heater doesn't cut the power. Now it's gonna be really bad for them. All this is gonna go into the shutdown mode so the heater can run its cooldown sequence and then stop. So I built a cab mounted on off button um, just along the power wire, which is the fused wire as well for this unit. I've just got a button there that if I press it and then the unit powers on, just means I can turn it off when I don't need it. And that's pretty much gonna end the video here. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm really, really happy with the aux beam control panel. It means I can access the things I wanna access when driving. And I think it's a really good system of doing it. I think what you can rig up to it's kind of limitless you can either directly rig it up uh, to one of the fused circuits or you can use relays in the way I have if it with a little bit of outside the box thinking if anyone's interested in or any of the other Orcs beam stuff I've installed then there's a discount code below um, but yeah it's the first time I've done a video where a sponsored video where I've been given something and actually I'm really happy with it because it's what I've wanted for the van and I'm happy with the product it's not a review because I've not had it long enough to sort of formulate one just sort of the install process of how and how I'm using it um, so if you've enjoyed this sort of content, um, one, I'd love to hear what you think I should add to the control panel. So put it down below other things I could add. I could add my water heater. I could add the diesel air heater. Just lots of things, really. But I'd like to see what you would add if you had one. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed the content, feel free to give me a like, a comment and a subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.